CJ, very exciting year, taking over the Braves analyst role on Bally. First off, just want to ask, how excited are you to take over that role and being the new league guy? Extremely excited. You know, we've been talking about this possibility for a while. Jeff Francoeur actually came to me about a year and a half ago and said there was a chance he might be stepping back a little bit. And we've lived here for a long time and never thought this job would be available. So it really wasn't on our radar. Uh, the fact that it came up and then we ultimately got it, like we have been blown away by uh, the fact that we'll get to be home a lot more. Uh, our kids are really excited to be a part of this and uh, we just feel so blessed right now. And obviously you come to an extremely successful franchise, a team that just won the National League East again, 104 wins. What can make this team better in 2024? I think, if anything, they got a little deeper. You know, quite honestly, adding Chris Sale was a big part of this. I know he's a little bit older, but he looked really good in spring training. He's got an unbelievable track record. You start thinking about him potentially making some postseason starts behind Max Fried, uh, behind, of course, Spencer Strider. You can get pretty excited about potentially really setting up a very good starting rotation uh, in the postseason. The other part of it is that the bullpen probably is as deep as it has ever been here. Uh, just up and down the line, the eight guys are going to be starting the season in that bullpen. You could put in a lot of big situations. More often than not, teams will have you know, two or three kind of go-to relievers. The Braves run way deeper than that. And then, of course, we know historically what an offense it was a year ago. And Ronald coming off that MVP season could be an even better year for him this year. Yeah, I know the, the lineup's obviously loaded up and down. Is there a guy that you think, whether it be in the rotation, in the bullpen, in the lineup, someone in AAA that can have a breakout season for the Braves this year in 2020? I think if you're talking breakout, you talk about maybe somebody who hasn't quite done it yet. That might be Jared Kelnick, right? Jared Kelnick comes over from the Seattle Mariners, got off to a great start last year, sixth overall pick a few years ago, coming out of high school and all kinds of accolades and excitement surrounding him. What we saw last year for that first month and a half is something he hopes he can replicate uh, over the course of a full season. I know the overall numbers in spring maybe are not what people wanted to see, but he was working on some things. He looked really good down the stretch, finished really strong. He could be the guy that's going to hit at the bottom of the order that could end up putting up some huge numbers. I wanted to ask you real quick about the number five starter job at a camp. Ronaldo Lopez wins that job. Obviously, he spent the last few years in the bullpen. Is he a guy that you think could stay in that number five spot, or could you see him shifting back toward the bullpen and a guy from AAA like Smith Shaw or Waldrop or Ian Anderson coming back up? barring injury and making the, the job at number five. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair assessment on how things might play out just because he hasn't started, right? Even if Ronaldo Lopez is throwing great, the idea that he's going to make 30 or 32 starts is highly unlikely. You're just not going to put that many innings on an arm who had been in the uh, bullpen previously, like you mentioned, all those previous years. So I don't think he makes 32, not because he's not capable, just because it's probably not the smart move. And so because of that depth that you talked about in some of the young arms, and of course Ian Anderson, healthy hopefully for the second half, they have the options that they need, which again only makes them a better team because then and the bullpen gets better if Lopez does eventually end up there. And I want to ask you about a few rule changes. So obviously this is the second year the pitch clock is in state. First I want to get your thoughts on how the first year went and then they, obviously a little less time and the new rule changes. So what's your thoughts on the pitch clock? It worked out really well last year. I think it was really good for fans. The reality was for our sport that our games were going too slow. We were concerned about the engagement. I know pitchers don't love it. I know it was a big adjustment for them. And some of the hitters didn't like it either. We saw some of the things that played out. But ultimately, we had to make some changes in our sport. The games were going too slow. So I think ultimately, it was a positive. It was a good thing that happened for the game. Now adding a couple more seconds that come off the clock, I should say, with runners on base, that didn't feel necessary to me, quite honestly, to go from 20 to 18. And I like kind of the round numbers, right? 15 and 20 just seem to work really well. Uh, they're trying to get every second they possibly can. So we'll see how that one plays out. It didn't feel like we needed to do it, but we will. And we see the new slide rule in the second base. We've seen that in spring training already in effect. What are your thoughts on that and how that could affect the game? Yeah, I don't love it, to be honest with you. I think what we saw in spring training, there was a couple of plays that were automatic outs. The guy's out by 10 feet, but because a foot or a hand or a knee ends up in front of the bag, it becomes obstruction. Major League Baseball has had this rule. It's been on the books for a long time. It has been more about actually enforcing that rule. They've asked umpires to do it a lot more. There are going to be a couple of times where fans are watching a game and they're going to get frustrated by this call. Of course, unless it goes for the Braves, then we'll be okay with it. But uh, it is going to be a big adjustment. It's going to look different the times that it pops up. And we'll see if Major League Baseball softens that a little bit, if it goes in the wrong direction. But I have a feeling it's here to stay. Talk to Braves president Derek Schiller last October. He said the one thing about this Braves team last year, there's no drama in the clubhouse. They gel extremely well, a great chemistry. What makes that intangible so effective for the Braves? 
I will tell you this, it has gone on for a long time here. I played here 20 years ago, and I only spent a half the season here, and I will tell you that that's exactly what was going on when I was here. I think it goes all the way back to the Bobby Cox era and the way that they run the team here. Not just the good players that they bring in, but they make sure that they bring in guys that are going to fit in. And then the next step of that is the leadership, and the leadership especially in uniform. And I think when you're treated well and you're respected and you're treated like a professional, guys react accordingly, and they all kind of fall in line. So I think that's a big part of what has happened here for decades. It continues. They're absolutely right you can pick on that very quickly the first time I walked into spring training for myself as a new guy this year how nice guys were I didn't think anybody even cared that I was here and guys congratulating me on getting the job it blew me away but that is something that has been a tradition with the Braves for a long time and CJ my final question if there's one thing above all else what excites you most about this team in 2024 I think probably the idea that it could be another record setting year for them you know essentially they did tie the Minnesota Twins that home run record but the Twins did it in an era when balls were flying out of the ballpark in 2019 so I think we see some records but I'll keep going back to the depth in both the rotation and the bullpen to go with the great offense. And everybody is coming to camp talking about a World Series. you got to get there first, and they know that, and they understand it. But the reality is, is that this is probably one of the best teams that they've ever put together on paper.